Hey Cougars, welcome to week two of science. Today I'm gonna to talk you through three different things. First, I'm gonna go over the materials that you're gonna to need to use for your instruction this week. Second, I'm gonna do a quick lesson for you on the difference between instincts and learned behaviors and how those relate to behavioral adaptations. And third, we're gonna talk about your assessment for this unit. You're gonna get an opportunity to work on a fun, creative project that shows your teacher exactly what you've learned about animals and their adaptations. <laughs> let's get started. All right, so let's first take a look at how you can access the materials that you're gonna need this week. You'll notice that I am in that last informative row of our parent materials guide for this week. And our topic is, again, animal adaptations, focusing on learned behaviors and instincts. Um, this video will be located here. And then this week, the students are just gonna read about their instincts and learned behaviors and then complete that final assessment. You'll notice that that assessment is highlighted in green here, meaning that it is a county assessment and will need to be turned in and will be graded as meets expectations or does not meet expectations. Students will have the opportunity to revisit their work if they need to add anything to it or make some improvements. So let's jump on over to that phase two document for science so I can show you specifically what the resources look like. As soon as this opens, you will notice um, that we're still just focused on this first chunk here, this first unit, and that last week the students completed one, two, three, and four. This week they are just focused on resource five and that final project. I'm gonna go ahead and select that bookmark. And it's gonna take me on down to resource number five, which is just this brief passage here. It's gonna tell them a little bit about the definitions of instincts and learned behaviors and how they connect to animal adaptations. And if you scroll just a little bit further, you will see information about that adaptation's final project. It does consist of building or creating a model of some kind and completing this table, but I will be back to talk about this at the end of the video. Let's jump in. All animals, even humans, have to have food, water, and shelter in order to survive. All animals also need to be able to protect themselves from harm, but how do they do that? How do they find those things and protect themselves? Well, that's all based on adaptations, which is what we learned about last week. So if we take a look at our flow chart here, we can see that we discussed those two main categories of adaptations. The first category was physical adaptations. And remember, those are adaptations that we can see on an animal or that are a part of that animal's body and are tools or resources that that animal can use in order to eat, find water, build shelter, or protect themselves. We talked about two specific examples and then a broader category of physical adaptations as well. So that first specific example that we discussed last week was camouflage, which of course is blending in or hiding into your habitat and surroundings in order to uh, avoid being discovered by a predator. That second example was mimicry, which was copying or mirroring what another animal looked like in order to hide from a predator as well. And then we did talk about this larger category of physical adaptation, which we just generally labeled different body parts. We know that those could be things like claws, whiskers, teeth, beaks, wings, hooves, maybe even fur or scales. Each one of those physical characteristics about an animal is gonna be able to help it survive and find those basic needs. The second category of animal adaptations that we discussed last week were behavioral adaptations. We know that behavioral adaptations are ways that animals act or things that animals do in order to survive. Not just animals, all living things. We talked about some specific examples on this side of adaptations as well. We discussed hibernation and dormancy, where living things store energy and conserve energy through cooler months when environments are too harsh to live in. We discussed migration when a large group of one species relocate or move to a new place in order to find food or warmer temperatures. And we also talked about some of those other behaviors that animals exist that allow them to survive. Specifically, we talked about our prairie dogs and how they burrow 
for protection from predators. And we talked about squirrels storing their food during the winter months so that they can survive to see the next spring. Now, it's through a combination of both physical and behavioral adaptations that all living things are able to thrive. Today, we're going to take the idea of behavioral adaptations one step further. Behavioral adaptations can also be divided into two distinct categories. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to remove our list from last week so we can build our next layer of our flow chart. One of those categories of behavioral adaptations are instincts. So let's add that. The second category are learned behaviors. Instincts, this first category, are natural behaviors that animals have when they are born. It's already programmed in their brain, it's already in their DNA. For example, in humans, we instinctively know that we're gonna need to walk at some point. And so even as infants, our body is built and designed in our DNA to be able to walk without having to be taught how to do so. Some other examples in animals that exhibit different instincts are things like spiders spinning their webs, baby turtles being able to crawl to the ocean without any support, and then even our examples from last week, like hibernation and dormancy and migration. These are all examples of behaviors that happen automatically without having to be taught because they are in the animal's DNA. Learned behaviors on the flip side are when animals can't do something instinctively or based on their instincts. Instead, they have to be taught a behavior. They have to learn a way to do something that may help them survive. That ability to learn from an experience is exactly what learned behaviors are. So let's think about in humans. I know when I was little, I had to learn that hot things can hurt you the hard way. I reached up and I touched that hot cookie sheet and I burned my fingers. Based on that experience, I learned not to touch hot things just after they come out of the oven. Animals also learn those types of lessons. Bear cubs have to be taught how to catch fish in the river. Insects have to learn which flowers taste good. And mother lions have to teach their young how to stalk their prey. Think about if you have a dog at home. Your dogs can even exhibit learned behaviors if you've taught them to roll over or sit or give you a handshake. The one really important thing to remember about learned behaviors are that they are critical for animals because without the lessons that animals learn, their lives would be at risk. Think back to that baby bear. If they weren't taught how to catch fish in the river, as they grow up, they wouldn't be able to get their food. Insects, if they don't learn which flowers taste better or which pollen is better to carry, then pollination wouldn't occur the same way and those bees wouldn't survive without their food. The mother lions passing on the skill of stalking prey enables those baby lions to grow up and be successful in their habitat as well. So remember, learned behaviors are critical for animals' survival. All right, so remember today, we dove in specifically to some behavioral adaptations and learned that there are two very clear categories about what those adaptations are. You have instincts that are built into your brain, built into that DNA that you and other animals know how to do without having to be taught. Learned behaviors, on the other hand, are behaviors or actions that do need to be taught. Without either of them, animals would not be able to survive. And that goes back to that broader picture about animal adaptations, without those physical adaptations about their bodies, and without those behavioral adaptations, like instincts and learned behaviors, animals wouldn't be able to find food, water, shelter, or be able to protect themselves. And that's why animal adaptations are so important to the way nature works. Now, before I jump back to our science packet to go over details about your final project, I did just want to mention 
that if you'd like some extra practice with examples of instincts and learned behaviors to check out that second science video, I model sorting a couple of examples and then I ask you all to participate with me. All right, let's head back to the packet. All right, so now that we are back on our science packet, let's dive into some of those details for the adaptations final project. This is a really fun project that we actually would have been doing at school if we were there, and we call it Create a Creature at School, so I will probably refer to it as that while discussing it. But essentially, the kids are gonna be designing and creating their very own animal and telling us about some physical and behavioral adaptations that their creature would need to survive in its habitat. So it's gonna be really important for you to think about what that habitat might be and then kind of think about the adaptations that would be important for living in that habitat. Um, it says that you can combine some of your favorite animals or create a brand new animal just from your imagination. Feel free to use as many animals as you'd like to put them together or kind of mix and match anything that you can think of. This can be as creative as you would like it to be. So here are some of those basic steps. First, you want to decide how you want to present your creature. You can draw a picture, you can build a model with materials at your house, you could create um, a digital image on the computer if you're a pro at drawing on your computer. Um, but after you've decided how you want to present that model, it's important for you to then think about the adaptations your creature is going to need in order to survive. Thinking about how will it get food? How will it find water? How will it build a shelter or use a shelter? How will it protect itself? And for steps two and three, this table is going to be very important because you're going to need to brainstorm two physical adaptations and two behavioral adaptations. If you look here in your table, you've got those numbered one and two for both physical adaptations and one and two for behavioral adaptations. The other important part of this table is telling how that adapt adaptation is going to help your creature to survive. So we want you to really think through it and be able to explain why you chose those specific adaptations for your creature. Once you have completed your table for planning, it's time to actually create that model, create your creature. We'd love to see you label the important parts, especially those physical adaptations, and then um, make sure that once you're all finished with your model and this table, that you are turning it into your teachers so that we can take a look at your creativity and your use of your knowledge about animal adaptations and how they are so important to helping animals survive. All right, good luck. I can't wait to see those projects.